The Mandela effect is an incredible psychological phenomenon of collective false memories named after Nelson Mandela when a paranormal researcher realized that numerous people thought that Mandela had died in prison in the 1980s. He, in fact, did not die in prison in the 1980s. Mandela did spend time in prison, but he was released in 1990 and went on to become the leader of South Africa until his death in 2013. Uh, so why do so many people have this false memory of Mandela's death? Scientists and medical professionals have not been able to explain it until recently. A new theory has emerged, and it has to do with a series of experiments at the Council for Nuclear Research, where scientists may have accidentally opened up a portal to another dimension. I cannot believe I'm even saying this in a serious context. Um, and even crazier, it all traces back to occult activity. Um, I am not a scientist. I don't know anything about science or theoretical physics or quantum physics or anything. Uh, so I brought one of my friends tonight. Uh, she also does not know anything about science or physics, uh, but I just wanted to bring her on so that I don't feel stupid while I'm talking about this because I'm sure the chat is going to have a lot to say about this. I already know I'm going to get roasted in the comments for some of the stuff that I talk about here, uh, but Taylor is joining me so that she can get roasted too. Hi, Taylor. How are you? Hi. I didn't know I was on here to get roasted, but I'm super <laughs> well, happy to be not, here. Not specifically to get roasted, just so like I potentially look less dumb That's when I'm fair. talking about this stuff that I have no idea about. But you you know about the Mandela effect, right? You've uh, yeah, you've seen some yeah. examples of this. We're, we're going to go through a few of the most popular examples. I think probably the most popular one is um, Shazam the movie starring Sinbad about a genie and co-starring uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, uh, a movie that did not exist at all. But so many people remember it, which is just crazy to me. Yeah. But it all started with Nelson Mandela. The one I know about is the Bernstein Bears. Yes. That one, because I was a big fan of that. So that's even crazier that I remember it wrong. Yes. Like and you are myself. not alone in that. It that's also one of the like really popular examples of the Mandela effect. Glad I'm not alone. <laughs> I've got a bunch of examples that we're gonna go through. There's one example in particular that just blew me away. Um, so we're gonna get into that. I also wanted to say hello to everyone that's in the chat. Hey y'all, how you doing tonight? Uh, feel free to send your comments and questions through the chat. Uh, super chats are certainly not required, but absolutely encouraged. And if you want your comment or question to be featured automatically, send it with a super chat and uh, I'll pop it up here on the screen. But um, hi, yeah, do you remember anything about Nelson Mandela? I just want to say hi, Leanne. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Taylor. Thanks for remembering. Hey, Leanne. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, do, do you I remember want. anything about Nelson Mandela? No. You showed me a picture just a second ago. You didn't even know who it was. <laughs> you were like, wait, I didn't think that's what he looked. I thought that was, I thought he was a skinny white dude, I think were your exact words, right? Is that what you said? It's along those lines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, Nelson Mandela um, famously went to prison uh, during an insurrection in South Africa, uh, was later released and became the leader of South Africa. And now he's like this global figure. He did die in 2013 uh but not in 1980 like a lot of people remember and people have very very specific memories of this i was talking to one of my friends uh, and she specifically said yeah i thought he was in prison i remember seeing something on the news about his death and a funeral uh so it's just it's crazy that this is what people are are remembering when he lived until like 10 years ago he was still alive like 10 years ago that's wild. I don't know anything, it turns out. So, <laughs> well, I mean, the only reason I knew that he wasn't dead or didn't die in the 1980s was because of that movie, uh, Invictus, that came out about the soccer players. Don't or whatever. Either, so. You don't know about that one? Either? Okay, cool. <laughs> let's, guest you've ever you know <laughs> let's, let's move on to an example you do know about. Uh, let's, take, <laughs> let's take a look at Sinbad. This one, I think this one is probably, obviously the Mandela effect is named after Nelson Mandela, but 
the Sinbad incident is probably the most popular example of uh, the Mandela effect. So here's Sinbad. I mean, this guy was an icon in the 90s. Uh, and in this picture, he is dressed up as a genie, but it is not for a movie. It's for uh, his TV show that he dressed up as a genie. Uh, here's a better picture of... There we go. There's Sinbad. I'm pretty sure... Oh, what was the name of that show where everyone barked at the guests? Um, oh, my God. And it was the guy that was friends with Eddie Murphy. And I can't remember his name right now. Uh, but he had his own talk show. Who? See, that wasn't the one I was talking about. I was talking about how people think the movie Kazam is called Shazam. Yeah, well... No, that's the that's the whole thing. Everyone thinks that he was in this movie called Shazam. Yeah, but I yeah, but he wasn't. And it was Shaq that was in Kazam. It was Shaq that was in Kazam, but that's not the way people remember. I know, there we go. I know, Thank you, Candace. It was Arsenio yeah. Hall. I, I'm pretty sure this is a picture from Arsenio Hall. Thank you. Uh, already looking like an idiot, and we're not even talking I about science. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Sorry. <laughs> I'm on out, and I don't really know what's happening. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so everyone remembers Sinbad in that movie that you're talking about, Shazam, but it's it Kazam never the existed. Movie name, though. The movie's Kazam. Well, yeah, I know that, but that's Are not whatever. Fighting? And it's not, it doesn't have Sinbad in it. It has Shaq in it. Yeah, that's the whole point. It, everyone you. just collectively misremembers this movie starring Sinbad that was never actually made. This is the movie you're talking about, Taylor. Yes. Yeah, Kazam with Shaq. It's, yeah. He's a rapping genie with an attitude, and he's ready for slam dunk fun. Did you watch this? I don't think I've ever seen it. It seems like a movie you would have watched, actually. It seems like a movie I'm probably going to watch tonight. <laughs> to educate, it's for science. I got to educate right. myself. <laughs> I need to uh, to research this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, from what, I, I never watched the movie, but from everything I heard, it was just absolutely awful. Uh, but yeah, this is the actual movie about a genie. I guess Sinbad and Shaq look kind of similar. I don't know if that's a problematic thing that to say. That sounds problematic. You should yeah, probably, that should probably should stay away from that. Uh, yeah. That was my intrusive thoughts winning. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this this is the actual movie. But this is like, okay, this Mandela effect is so common that a few years ago, College Humor did an April Fool's joke. And released this movie poster of Sinbad in Shazam. I would have believed that wholeheartedly. Yeah. Because, I'm so gullible. Yeah, but this is this was just feeding into this false memory that so many people had. I mean, I thought that there was a movie called Shazam starring Sinbad. Well, and right, and now we're in an era of like everyone just gets served stuff to their face 24-7. So no one's Googling anything. No one's That's like true checking too. this. Like they're like, oh yeah, that was real. Yeah, that's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, th th this one is just crazy to me yeah. because I have so many people that I know that thought for sure Shazam was an actual movie. You, you didn't you didn't experience this one, right? Um, I knew of it, but that's not the one I experienced. No, I we were talking about this earlier. I can't remember the other ones, but like, I think if you bring them up, I'll be like, oh, yeah, that's the one. But the one that I'm like, I vividly remember is the Bernstein Bears one because that was okay. Really I was we're gonna like, get we're we're definitely gonna no. get to that one. Yeah. Um, okay, so this next one, this is the one that absolutely I was just it blew my mind. Okay, so fruit of the loom. Y yes, this is their logo. This is their logo, right? That I mean the logo that we know now. However, yeah. this is the logo that I remember. That's the one I remember. This is the logo with the cornucopia, right? Yeah. I remember this logo on like old t-shirts and underwear from yeah. way back in the day. Yeah. This logo never existed. Never. There was never a fruit of the loom cornucopia, but so many people remember again, I was talking to someone about this logo and they were like, I, I know fruit of the loom had a cornucopia. It's the only reason I know what a cornucopia is. Yeah. Because it was part of the Fruit of the Loom logo. I wouldn't have known otherwise. Yeah. I don't know where this one comes from. I did a ton of research I mean, on it. Yeah. I can't find anything about it. I just feel like the universe has gaslit me. <laughs> it's possible. But like, 
This Did one scientists invent gaslighting. That's I, the universe invented gaslighting. It's not our fault. It's the universe's fault. Um, but even even with this one, because I specifically remember this cornucopia, but apparently it's it's not real. But then I found a picture online. Look at this. That's not what I thought. That I don't know. Where this my guy's T-shirt has the Fruit of the Loom cornucopia logo, but and I got so excited. I was like, I knew I was right. I I knew all along that it had the cornucopia, and then I found out that this was actually just a really good Photoshop job. Yeah, that's what I was thinking immediately. It was. It's one hundred percent photoshopped. Yeah, but you're just a but, big dumb idiot. <laughs> Thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that one, I I would have I would have bet money that one of the old Fruit of the Loom logos had a cornucopia in it. Huh. Would have bet money on it. Yeah. Um, okay. The next one, th this one kind of threw me off too because I was like, wait, what? Are you sure? The Monopoly guy. Yes, that was the one I could not think of. This is crazy too because I always remembered the Monopoly guy with a monocle. But you know why I think that? Does the peanut guy have an... Uh... I think yes, the that's planter's why I think peanut I, guy does have a monocle. Yes, I think that those two are just similar, and so that's why people thought that. You think so? Does Jiminy Cricket have one too? Uh, I believe Jiminy Cricket has a monocle also. I think we're just like confusing it with just. But we're talking characters. about board games, nuts, and a Disney movie. All three of my favorites. Okay. <laughs> You can see how I could get them confused. <laughs> easy, easy to confuse. I love a good board game and, <laughs> and nuts. I love those two things mostly. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this one, this one like kind of surprised me too. Yeah. Because if, oh. again, if someone had asked me, does the Monopoly guy have a monocle? I would have been like, yeah, yeah, of course he does. Leanne says Jiminy Cricket does not have a monocle, so I think I'm just well, making you know, up shit now. Sorry. Possibly. It's, it's possible. Okay. Let's move on to... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's move on to the example that you are most familiar with, and that is the Berenstain Bears. But it's actually pronounced the Berenstain Bears, apparently. Because it's not pronounced... S or it's not spelled S-T-E-I-N. It's spelled s-t-a-i-n which just seems like a silly choice to me right but i i remember watching these cartoons as a kid and i'm almost positive they pronounced it berenstein right you watched you watched the shows you didn't read the books i mean you read the books too but they they had they had the shows and yeah i watched them as a kid so we, you know we did both illiterate I was, a, I was a cultured child very illiterate but also cultured <laughs> um yeah, no, this one's crazy. And I feel like I just found this out like maybe two years ago. Like it was like I went my entire life thinking one thing. With a completely false memory. Yeah. And once again, you're one of many. They have, a, have this exact same false memory. They have a quiz online. I think it's BuzzFeed. Can I say that? Um, can you say names? Yeah. They have those like little quizzes and there's one that's like, which one is the real one? And it compares the two. Uh -huh. One of them is the Jif's peanut butter, Jiffy peanut yes. butter. Jif versus Jiffy. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it's I, I always been Jif. I still don't uh, know. There was another one. Um, It was Pikachu's tail. Did it have a black stripe or not? Sorry, I wasn't a freaking nerd. <laughs> All right, calm down. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, a lot of people remember Pikachu's tail with the black stripe. I That's think crazy. it did not have a black stripe. It was just solid yellow. Huh. But yeah, there's, I mean, I found like 50 different examples of this. I didn't want to go through all of them. I just wanted to go through the ones that I thought were like kind of the most mind-blowing a little bit. The Fruit of the Loom one, I mean, that that one, that ruined, that ruined uh, my self-confidence because I literally would have bet money on that. That yes, <laughs> At some point, the Fruit of the Loom lo logo had a cornucopia. I want to play this BuzzFeed game with you and butt money on it so I can get <laughs> So you can get We're just wealthy throwing money away. If we're just throwing money away. Might as well. <laughs> Whatever. But okay. So people have been trying to figure out for years like where this comes from. How do so many people have this collective false memory? 
and yeah. and some people have said kind of like you were talking about with the monopoly guy and the planners peanuts guy maybe it's just you know we get him confused in our head i don't know where the shazam and kazam one comes from with sinbad yeah. versus Shaq. that that might be rooted in systematic racism we don't know for sure um but Oops. i just i i feel like that's not an adequate explanation there's got to be something going on here and what what some people are now saying and i mean it's a huge conspiracy theory is they're tying it back to the large hadron collider um that's part of the cern research institute or whatever the council for nuclear uh nuclear research um so they've got this I giant machine exist <laughs> yeah i listen i am super invested in the large hadron collider uh this thing this thing is mind-blowing uh it's wild i'm gonna play some videos about it because i can't do an adequate job explaining it um but in a nutshell they've got this giant machine over in europe it's under it's it's underground it's like this huge circular tunnel um and it basically just smashes uh particles together to explode them so they can study i, I don't know the the subatomic particles that it produces when these protons collide so i'm going to play some videos on it cuz this this stuff this stuff is crazy Feels uh, heavy. it it really is but it's all going to it's all going to get back to the mandela effect and the theory that the two are related. So let me let me play this first video that just kind of gives you an overview of the Large Hadron Collider. Here we is go. the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC for short. It's a 27 kilometer particle accelerator sitting under the border of France and Switzerland. It's an atom smasher, the biggest in the world, designed and built by thousands of engineers, scientists, and mathematicians from across our tiny planet with the goal of helping other scientists learn about things of incredibly small size by smashing them together. These smashings are called collisions. Okay, so pretty much like I explained, it's just smashing together these protons, right? And they produce smaller particles. It's how they found, it's ultimately how they found uh, the Higgs boson particle, which is also called the, the the God particle and is supposedly like kind of the glue that holds all the atoms and protons together, right? I know this is really, really nerdy stuff so far. I, I know, but it, it gets cooler. Okay, so this next video is a physicist uh, providing a little bit more insight on it. And it, it happens to be uh, an episode of the, the Joe Rogan experience which you know i'm a huge fan of joe rogan so let's let's take a look at this right yeah, protons true. around in a circle uh, both ways that one one beam goes one way one goes the other way and they go around eleven thousand times a second so that's a very close to the speed of light and then we cross the beams and collide the particles and in those collisions you're recreating the conditions that were present at less than a billionth of a second after the big bang how about that I was lost in the accent. <laughs> you couldn't, you couldn't pay attention to, to the information he was sharing, just his accent. I think we're gonna have to run that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this Large Hadron Collider, it was launched in two thousand eight, right? And and like uh, that guy's name was Brian Cox, by the way. I know you love that. You love that. Um, <laughs> The, the tunnel system is 17 miles, like he said, in circumference. It weighs, like the whole machine weighs around 7,000 tons. Like this is a huge, huge machine. And apparently about 10,000 scientists have been working on this thing, conducting experiments, just smashing these protons together. Pretty cool. In July, 2022, they conducted an experiment and supposedly what happened as a result of this experiment is that the Earth's geomagnetic field was weakened for a brief period of time and caused um, a fluctuation in the global electric grid. Okay. So I know, I know all stuff that's way over my head. I, I don't understand. I can't wait till this ends up on Fox News. Like two dumb <laughs> idiots. <laughs> 
<laughs> so what happened with the geomagnetic magnetic field and um, the global electrical grid, supposedly what this did was it opened a portal to another dimension. Okay. Okay. You know what? I have this theory that shows like that, like stranger things and stuff like that. Uh -huh. I have this theory that that's, that stuff is all true. Like they didn't just make that up. Right. Like I robot. Like one yep. day robots are taking over. Like let's be okay. real. Because I feel like we watch enough shows and movies about like portals and like going through them and all these mm -hmm. things happening. And then it's real life. Well, just... this is real life. I know. This is, saying, this like, is total this real, is real life. I mean, so the, the purpose of the Earth's geomagnetic field is essentially to protect us from, from the sun. Right. And, and when it was weakened, apparently we were getting like solar waves that were hitting the earth. And that's what caused this, this abnormality in the electrical grid. And that's why they're saying this, this portal opened up. So, yeah, I mean, that's real life and, and the whole purpose. Okay. So backing up for a second, the whole purpose, of, I know, right. Of the large Hadron collider, the whole purpose was to be able to study conditions, uh, similar to when the big bang occurred right but it's also to be able to study dark matter it's it, it's also to study uh black holes apparently one of the things that that people are concerned about with this large hadron collider is that they can basically make a black hole anytime they want which is super scary i mean those things those things are so powerful we don't understand them at all and apparently they can just kind of willy-nilly make black holes with with this giant machine that's buried underneath the the French and Swiss border. That's crazy. My anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> Every just, time you keep telling me making like, black holes. Yeah, you just keep blowing my mind more and more and I'm like <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So, now we know about the large hadron collider L LHC and that it created this hole in our uh, our geomagnetic field, right? Yeah. So, like I said, a lot of people are now saying because they've opened potentially this portal, that <laughs> this is so wild that it essentially put us on an alternate timeline, and we're essentially now living in the multiverse. So, everything that we have experienced has now shifted and changed. We're no longer on the timeline that we were accustomed to, and we're gonna we're gonna relate this back to the man. Uh, the what does Mandela that mean, effect. though? Like, what does I, that mean? For me? I truly <laughs> don't really you know. You can't just tell me this stuff and not give me like a guide. <laughs> okay, we're gonna watch a video and from this like thirteen-year-old physicist. He's called like the smartest kid in the world, and he he kind of broke it down a little bit so we're gonna we're gonna watch his video real quick accelerator altered the weight of one electron and therefore sh destroyed our universe and shifted us into the universe that's directly next to it and therefore things are different in this universe so cool as hell when it opened this portal it shifted us into another reality another universe an alternate reality we're on a new timeline when did they say this happened um, the experiment that supposedly opened up the portal, the portal incident happened in, uh, July, 2022, I believe. So like I just over a year ago, May of 2023 and things can be redone for me, <laughs> but here, so, okay. So <laughs> here's the thing though. Like, how can I make this about if we shifted timelines, then that shifts the entire timeline past and future but then does that like impact like the life i lived in the past yes does that's that exactly mean, like, the point mm -hmm. one day my family could forget about me the reality has changed and that's why we remember a cornucopia on the fruit of the loom logo and not just the fruit that's why you remember the berenstein 
Bears and not the Berenstain Bears. That's why we remember a movie starring Sinbad called Shazam and not a movie starring Shaq called Kazam. I'm literally <laughs> I don't want <laughs> people to forget about me. We now live in a different timeline. But here's the thing, okay? This is this is where it it's it gets worse. even a little more crazy. So Max Laughlin, the 13-year-old that we just heard from, yeah. He disappeared in 2018. And no one knows where he went. No one knows where he is. No one's heard from him. He just disappeared in 2018. So he actually made the statements about the particle accelerator before the portal incident in July 2022 because they'd been smashing protons for a long time. They'd been studying dark matter and, and all this other stuff for a while before the portal incident in July 2022. So Max Laughlin is just completely off the grid now. Some people are saying, oh, yeah, they they secret they they've got him in a secret location where he's doing experiments because he's he's like the future of science essentially there's other yeah, people maybe are... the positive thing in me is like because i'm trying to be more positive these days okay the positive part of me is like they're trying to protect him could be because like bad people could i mean not saying that the government is the greatest thing ever but bad people could get him that's and true do nothing or it's like Jin v and he's locked in the cell and he's getting abused Oh, that would be rough. Yeah, he's like a he's like a superhero. And yeah. they locked him, they locked him in the forest. Yeah, yeah. Great reference to Gen V. Great reference. Um it's that's really crazy. It's weird it's, though. Yeah, it's weird. I was gonna say, did he have parents? Obviously, he had parents. Where are his parents? I I could not find anything about him or any of his relatives. Do you think the internet maybe, is full of conspiracy theories about what happened to Max Laughlin, though? You think maybe that was a fake name? I mean, it's possible, sure. But like someone. But you know what's right interesting? Now, someone would have had to have seen him. In real I mean, life. The, yeah, uh, you would think, right? Um, yeah. But I mean, that was he disappeared in 2018, and he was, I guess, like 13 years old or something. So five years later, now he's 18. He could look like a completely different person. I'm hoping um, that he's okay because. That dude is so smart, and he has so many other things to tell us. I know. I well, you know, it it's kind of like when uh, I mean the 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 only reason we developed our you know atomic capabilities is because we got a scientist from from Germany. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I, I mean we we snuck him out of Germany so he could come work on you know atomic technology for us. So who knows? Maybe maybe they're hiding him away, and he's. He's working on some new crazy technology. You never know. That's the wild thing about it. Okay. I don't like it here. So <laughs> here's where it gets even creepier. I know. It gets even a little bit creepier. I'm I thought we were play... just going to be talking about fun things tonight. And now no. I'm like freaking out. No, no. Unfortunately not. Because there have been a lot of rumors about CERN. Okay. Uh, once again, CERN is like a, a, a global initiative. There's scientists from all different countries that are that are working on this research that's happening at um, the Large Hadron Collider, right? Yeah. But there have been a lot of theories, you know, kind of saying like, this is sort of like the Illuminati a little bit. The stuff that they're doing is dangerous. They're They're playing with black holes. They're playing with dark matter. This isn't good. Uh, so there's been a lot of conspiracy theories about CERN. Um, and this is the one that really freaked me out and caught my attention. And, and this is kind of how it it traces back to the occult. So oh boy, buckle up, buckle up for this one. CERN has been a name synonymous with the occult. In 2016, they made headlines after footage was uncovered of scientists performing a human sacrifice at the Large Hadron Collider grounds. What? <laughs> so, this is on CERN property. Once again, they've got this giant circular tunnel that's 17 miles in circumference but of course they've got like buildings and offices um uh, you know on on ground level right because the the collider itself is underground um 
and there was some footage that people found of these mysterious cloaked figures apparently performing a human sacrifice ritual. Okay. How crazy is this? Okay. But what if, what if? <laughs> just, Hear me out. Hear what me if out. these scientists that are like really heavy jobs and just wanted to prank the whole world? <laughs> We'll really throw them off. Well, let's wait, no, keep... does it show actually? Let's keep watching. Hang oh, on. No. The video shows multiple haunting figures dressed in black robes walking ritualistically before a woman is attacked. Later explained as a fake human sacrifice, which the organization claimed was a prank, they didn't condone it as it undermined the scientific nature of our work. Guys, it's a prank. We were joking. It oh, wasn't real. We didn't act. <laughs> it's a joke. No, 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 no. We didn't actually sacrifice anyone. It was a prank. It was just a big old April Fool's. We we got you. What I do you think? That. If I read that headline, I was like, it was a prank. I'd be like, yeah, that's actually really good. <laughs> but you it's also well. said you're the most gullible person in the world. I know. That's why I'm like, why am I the one on this one? And you want to? <laughs> and you really want to believe them? You want to believe the best? And so you would have bought into you think you think that they're telling the truth, saying, oh, no, 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 this was just a big prank. I think that's what I want to believe. No, I don't think I believe that. I think I want to believe that everybody's just really nice. Uh, this is why you don't bully nerds in elementary school. Right. Because then they're going to human sacrifice you later on. Teaming, and they're going to ruin all of our lives. And the joke's on us, huh? Yeah, so they're going to they're going to send you. Oh, you stole their lunch money in elementary school? Guess what? They're going to send you through a black hole now. I'm stealing your memories. Ha, huh? gotcha. <laughs> you stole my lunch money? I'm stealing everything about your childhood. Yeah, you just got got. <laughs> you just got CERN. I'm ruining the Berenstein Bears for you. We're and the Monopoly sure guy. On watch list after this. <laughs> and gaslighting you into thinking there was a movie that didn't really exist. But that's yeah, crazy, that. right? That'd be the ultimate prank. It would be. Imagine that these scientists and like government officials are just like silly little geese. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> not even today. Just out here goofing. It's fine. <laughs> that would be really funny. <laughs> so I don't know if you noticed, Taylor, uh, there was a statue that they were performing that that human sacrifice in front of. Okay, so that statue, this is actually uh, a full picture of the statue. Okay. Uh, and this is Lord Shiva. Okay. It was donated by the country of India to the CERN facility. But obviously Shiva is known as the destroyer of worlds. So is that what they're doing out there? Are they destroying our reality and sending us into a new one? That's what it feels like. It really is. And I, you know, okay. So the conspiracy about the particle accelerator being the reason for the Mandela effect or uh, Mandela effect and that we're just on a, a new timeline, right? Did you think you said have... Mandela effect? <laughs> Mandala, yeah. <laughs> this is the Mancala effect. Where does that Manca go? Yes. <laughs> Medulla oblongata. That's right. what I'm talking about. Um, okay. But yeah, so some of, obviously this is a, a pretty insane conspiracy theory, right? Yeah. That the reason for the Mandela Mandela now, now now you've got me saying it. The reason for the Mandela effect um is because we're on an alternate timeline. I mean, that's that's pretty wild, right? And so there's been some people that have said, well, but the the collider, the large hadron collider didn't come around until 2008. And there there is documentation of of people talking about these collective false memories. I mean, I, I listened to one, you know, where they were talking about this from 2001. Um, Philip K. Dick, the author, talked about it as well. He's a, a popular science fiction author. I'm sure I know. Is. Brian Cox and Philip Dick um, and the nuts. Uh, <laughs> so people have been talking about these collective false memories for a long time. And so, you know, naysayers for the theory will say, well, if they've been talking about this for years and years, then it couldn't be the fault of the Large Hadron Collider because that wasn't around until 2008. But yeah. like we were talking about, if our timeline really did shift 
because of these experiments that are happening in France and Switzerland, if the timeline shifted, it's going to affect the past, present, and future. And so really, I don't even think that's a good explanation for it. Imagine you go to bed and you have a whole family and you wake up and you're like, who the hell is in my house? Whose baby is this? (laughs) Why does it look like me? (laughs) Everyone just walking around reteaching themselves everything. That's crazy. I mean, who knows? That sounds like my nightmare. Yeah. I, I mean, that would be pretty nightmarish. I'm not good with change. But in reality, I mean, you wouldn't even know, like maybe, maybe you had a really close friend. And when you switch timelines, you both just kind of forgot about each other. Honestly, and you wouldn't even really I, know. I could name a person. <laughs> you, want, you want to do like an eternal sunshine of the spotless mind type routine? Yeah, give me a full <laughs> lobotomy. Why don't they all just calm down and give everybody a lobotomy and then they can run whatever they want? It's a good call. I mean, that would, that would make life a lot easier for a lot of people. Life's gone pretty well for me right now. Why would we move? Why would we ruin that? What's going on? Well, you might have the new timeline to thank for that. You think any of these scientists are on hinge and want to like partner for life that they don't want to screw them? <laughs> Is there a some kind of list that's like, we'll protect her? You you know what? It's every man for himself. At this I think moment. I think you should look into it. I think you should see if you can partner up Again, with a quantum right. physicist mm-hmm. and see if they can just create the optimum timeline for you. I'm going to go sit at the library tomorrow. <laughs> I don't think they're hanging out at libraries, really. Oh, well, but <laughs> if CERN really did mess up the timeline, right, with the particle accelerator, if they sent us into an alternate reality, um, then all this Mandela effect stuff potentially is just remnant memories from our existence in another timeline. It's like it's like brain echoes. I don't like it. It's like deja vu kind of. You know, you know how everyone talks about like deja vu is just like a essentially a a glitch in the matrix? Do you want to know a fun thing about deja vu? Yes. Some people think that deja vu um, is more prevalent in people with lazy eyes because one eye sees something before the other. Really? I can't confirm or deny. <laughs> I was about to ask, how intense is your deja vu? <laughs> <laughs> I just feel a little special. <laughs> I didn't make um, that up. I hope, I hope I read that somewhere because sometimes I make up facts. So that could I- also be just a Mandela effect. You never know. <laughs> I I know for a fact someone said this. Now you just have to ask a bunch of other people with lazy well, we eyes have a whole if community. they've read the same research. Yeah, we have a whole community. Yeah, you need to <laughs> you need to get a study together. Lazy eyes anonymous. <laughs> um, I did. I definitely want to hear the the chat's thoughts on this. You know, what you think in terms of the Mandela effect, what could potentially be the cause of it. If there's anyone in the chat who actually has some scientific experiments or experiments, experience is what I was trying to say. (laughs) I would love to hear your thoughts on this because, I mean, there's just, there's so much information out there on the interwebs and you never, you never know like what's, I mean, like that, that picture I found of the Fruit of the Loom cornucopia. I mean, I was so excited when I found that. I was like, I knew it. I knew it. And now I can tell everyone who's been telling me, no, the cornucopia, the cornucopia never existed. I can show them this picture and prove them all wrong. I was like pretty vindictive about it. Uh, yes. And then I found out it was Photoshopped. It sounds like you. Yeah. I just, I just bought right into it. Um, this is kind of an interesting point from Carrie. The particle accelerators are requiring real ID as of this year to enter, trying to track who enters all of the sudden. I can't tell if this is sarcasm or <laughs> no. I mean, that to me, like, if they're trying to guard this that closely, I mean, yeah, they are doing some really important experiments, right? And it has a lot to do with, um, like I said, dark matter. It has to do with black holes. It has to do with how our universe is held together. And so, if if that if that information got into the wrong hands, then potentially they could they could do some pretty serious damage with it. 
Um, but at the same time, this is like I said, it's a global initiative. So it's not just one like country that has this this knowledge, right? I don't like it. I don't really like it either. It if seems the government is listening. Super sketchy. This this message is for the government. If you're not the government, look away. Stop it. <laughs> Stop doing this. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a serious statement from Carrie. She said she lives by Fermilab. Um, I don't know. I don't know what that means. I don't know what Fermilab is. Like I said, I am not a scientist. Neither is Taylor. Neither one of us are scientists or have any real knowledge about this. Um, hey, thank you for the super chat from Shelly Smith. Appreciate you, Shelly. Um, is America's particle physics and accelerator laboratory. Oh, so that's that's a particle accelerator here in the U.S., which yeah. that's a really good point. Thank you for bringing that up, actually, Carrie, because the the Large Hadron Collider uh, that's in Europe, that's just the biggest one. There's so they're tons requiring, they're of particle accelerators all over the world. They're requiring real ID for visitors. Okay, I guess that kind of makes sense. Yeah, so it's but, for like... I mean, kids. you can go to NASA. You can go to the Space Center. Well, apparently and take a tour without a real ID. So what do you have to say about that, Taylor? I, I've, I've read a lot of things that that's fake. NASA's just a money dump. Do you not think we actually landed on the moon? Mm -mm. You're a moon denier? I'm a moon denier. Do you think the Earth is flat as well? No, I think that's it. Okay. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Maybe. I don't want to paint myself into a corner here. I like options. <laughs> so you don't think the moon landing was real, but you do think the earth is round. And yeah, for now. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. I can only dive into one thing at a time. And I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just now getting an understanding of aliens. Like, give me a second. Oh, the alien, the aliens are real. I've, I've been researching aliens for a long, long time. Um, what about people who don't remember the monopoly guy with a monocle? or the cornucopia their universe didn't switch wow really and good people point that know the real version yeah and are this there is more a great them, point are there more of them than there are of us i don't know or maybe it's kind of like you said taylor um you know there's some people with lazy eyes that get you know more intense deja vu maybe there's just some of us that have stronger brain echoes from the, the previous just, timeline the nerds are protecting the lazy eyed people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i got made fun of too all right uh, uh leanne also asked about the fl uh the flight of the navigator i'm not familiar with that movie do you know anything about the flight of the navigator no but i could talk about real housewives all day okay let's not do that i don't want to do that at all i wanted to take a look at this uh this comment from shelly smith thank you again uh for the super chat shelly it would be great if they were working on solving climate change, free, clean energy, et cetera. Something tells me their goals may not be so positive. That so part. that's that's exactly one of the things that I was thinking. Now, nuclear energy, I mean, that's that's a big deal, right? Um, supposedly it's it's more clean, um, it's yeah. it's more renewable, right? Theoretically. Well, it's supposedly, it's like no, it's a fact. <laughs> Is it? Are we sure about that? Because I mean, when you have these nuclear reactors that go bad you end up with chernobyl so is it is it well you know? will chernobyl even happen again if we are on a timeline shift we'll never know that's a great point maybe maybe chernobyl didn't happen in our all our, our original timeline yeah and then it did happen in our new timeline after scientists opened up a interdimensional portal that's yeah. so crazy to me that's so crazy and you know what that means right if they're opening portals into other dimensions, that means we're closer than ever to try to time travel. I just like normal life. Why do we have to go do more? Everybody calm down. You're telling me you wouldn't want to time travel? Maybe back to May of 2023. Okay, fair enough. Um, but I agree with I do agree with Shelly <laughs> that you know, instead of just bashing together protons so that we can study dark matter and uh black holes maybe figure out a way to create an engine that runs on salt water how but cool would people, that be i feel like people like 
are so like we're more captivated by negativity and scary stuff mm. that like if they were to focus on climate change and clean energy no one would care you know like it's obviously important but i don't i think i think people would be like oh they're just doing good things mm. but it's like when we find out the government's doing bad things we're like what is going on you know see i disagree a little bit because okay. i think there's a lot of money to be made in not finding sources for renewable energy and not solving the climate change problem problem yeah. i think that we're just perpetuating the problem on purpose so that people don't lose their jobs yeah and i, I think mean, that goes for a lot of hot button social issues as a matter of fact just get a new job in renewable energy it's crazy mm -hmm. learning you can learn and evolve with time or you can get oh, that's so hard though that's so tough I know but, it's really exhausting becoming a better person. <laughs> but thank you for the great point, Shelly, and the super chat. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Um, Chuck Norris, Chuck Norris Club said Chuck so. Ant Man shrunk down to subatomic particles, and then he was trapped in his van. And also, Doctor Strange opened a portal. Both accurate statements. I don't know but, what this is about. Okay, so so this is about Marvel characters. Um, but which I'm ashamed that that I know that information. Um, I think this kind of goes back to what you said initially, Taylor, where they're not just coming up with this stuff, right? I mean, all these science fiction writers. Um, I I, I remember oh, watching 2001: A Space Odyssey for the first time, and they had that space station. It was like it was turning really slowly to offset gravitational pull. That's a real thing. The movie Interstellar, I think that's where we're headed right now. I, I think that. that scientists are trying to figure out a way to be able to travel travel interdimensionally uh, to solve problems of the past and potentially problems of the future. That's what I think is going on right now. Well, I don't care what you think. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, this is a great point. This is a great point from Leanne, and this is what we were talking about. Taylor, did you see that someone made a cure for cancer, but they are being shut up because cures don't make money? That's exactly yeah. what I was talking about. Yeah, I believe that 1000%. And uh, another great example of this, we already know that someone has invented an engine that can run on, I, I think it was water. I believe it was water. Like it was able to convert water into combustion, essentially. Um, and that was bought up by one of the major car manufacturers and shelved because that would hurt, that would hurt the oil companies. Just get a new job. Hey, listen, guys, you are so lazy. Make a couple billion dollars. You just sit on your ass all day. I'm sitting <laughs> here. I hate it. I and well, being like the working class, that's fine. you know what? And 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 now we've got a guy like like Elon Musk that is pushing hard for electric vehicles. And I feel like he's being vilified a little bit right now. He is the villain. He invented being the villain. He is not a villain. A villain? Hello? I'm I'm switching timelines. I'm glitching. Listen, we currently. can take this argument offline, all right? But I'm glitching. <laughs> they don't want to do <laughs> but he, look, I mean, that's a guy that was really doing something good for the world. Um, and now he's... Well, yeah, Just, uh, being vilified. And doesn't do anything with it. I have an idea. Save all the animals in San Twitter. Antonio. What's that? Save all the animals in San Antonio. Do that. That seems selfish. Just because that's the city you live in, you you just want to save the animals here. What about all the Start animals in, in America? Start, Start in San Antonio. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. fair enough. Let's test it out. Oh, great point, Candace. Yeah, they also had uh, they had steam powers in the in the eighteen hundreds. Yes, um, and certainly certainly ways that we could you know convert that uh and use a uh, a modernized version of steam power it doesn't have to be oil powered combustion it just doesn't have to be that way that's just the easiest and most effective and what we're used to and what all the car manufacturers have have designed their machines around i'm writing that down at 8 53 p.m davy was liberal for five seconds <laughs> We're we're this close, people. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Deborah wants to have a coffee and chat about all these issues and leaving a church and the cult. Um, you know, we did have we did a live show in Austin uh, in July, and we probably need to do uh, another one of those where people can come through and, and share their thoughts on cults and alternate timelines and portals to I'm, other dimensions and I'm black invited. holes and dark matter. What? Am I invited to this one? Yeah, of course. Cool. Always. I mean, Anyone's invited. Everyone. In the and the everyone lab. is invited to come and join the chat. I think Always. My invite was lost last time. Y That's your okay. invite? My invite to the I mean, show. that invite was very public, so could have showed up. Chose not to. Um, yeah, the the oh. the Mandela effect, I, I mean. Aw. I'll only go just, if Taylor's going to be there. Did you see that? Are you reading the chat again? <laughs> I'll only go if Taylor's there. Love you. Thank you. Thank you for validating Taylor, Chuck Norris. Appreciate that. Um, you know, the whole the whole Mandela effect thing. I mean, I, who knows what causes it? It could be it could be a, a, a tear in the space time continuum. Who knows? I still like it's it still is like blowing my mind a little bit. I will say I've been like obsessed with this kind of stuff, like this creepy, like who's controlling our lives stuff. Since I was in elementary school, I read A Wrinkle in Time and I watched mm. the original version of A Wrinkle in Time, not the new one that wasn't as good. The original one is so creepy and because it's like low budget, in my opinion. Um, but it was like addicted to it. I don't know. It stuff it scares me. That's the one where where people were communicating across different timelines, right? A wrinkle well, in time. Girl's dad like goes missing and then he's in a prison in another world and like mm -hmm. all this stuff. Yeah. I mean, there's so much, there's so much science fiction literature, um, TV movies about this, this kind of stuff. So there's, there's gotta be some validity to it. Yeah. Interstellar. That's the movie that really like made me take it all serious. You know, watching, um, watching that show and, and seeing like kind of how they explained the the travel through dimensions into new dimensions yeah was really really cool to me and i asked someone about it after i watched the movie i i asked someone uh who is like a scientist um you know do you believe that the time travel is real and he was like well I, I mean look at look at time zones theoretically you could travel from one country to another and because you're moving fast enough you end up in the previous day or the next day or that's at the same like, time. That's just, to me is like, so it's like, obviously it's math. But I mean, <laughs> you speed that up, speed that up to the, to the speed of light, like what they're doing with the, the large Hadron Collider speed up travel to 99.999999% of light. Now all of a sudden, maybe you, maybe you're not just traveling, you know, a few hours, Maybe you're traveling days or years yes. or decades. Watch out, Davey's thinking. Everybody, <laughs> everybody, freak out! He's got he's got his brain going. I'm he's just saying. Out. I'm just saying that there. We haven't been able to adequately explain the Mandela effect, and so maybe there is something more to this. Yeah. I don't think you're wrong. I think there's probably more to a lot of things, but I think as humans, we're like, oh, we're just being silly geese. We're just, we're just and and maybe that's it too. But I and maybe maybe it's something as simple as just collective consciousness, right? Where one person believes something hard enough, and then their inner circle starts believing it as well, and it just spreads. I don't know, but stuff like numerous unrelated, unassociated people all remembering specifically Nelson Mandela dying in prison. Yeah, that's crazy. That's wild. Yeah. Um, numerous people all misremembering <laughs> something as silly as a movie with Sinbad in it that never existed. Right. There's, there's gotta be something to that. Um, Carrie said, you think it's the government behind the Mandela effect? If more people question their reality and memory, they are more easily controlled. That said, there is something going on with that particle accelerator. Carrie is on fire tonight. 
Carrie, yeah. Carrie is firing on all cylinders. Yeah. Not to go back to the engine analogy, but yeah. <laughs> um, that's that's an interesting way to look at it. Is maybe the government is manipulating yeah. our memory somehow. Oh, I believe that. So that we're all operating in this state of confusion, and they're small. They're starting with small, silly stuff. Yeah. But who knows how far they could potentially take it? Yeah, I don't think we can count anything out. I don't think we can put anything past our government. I don't think we can trust our government by any means. Well, I don't even think it's it's our government necessarily. You I know, think like, it's people controlling the government. Like I think yeah. there's a higher power that's like. I know it's just like we're not gonna be able to do anything about it. So everybody just fall in line. All right. No, no, we have to resist. We have to resist. We have to <laughs> we, so we need to storm work. CERN. We, <laughs> who's with me? Let's storm CERN. We ride it down. Show, show us your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, we ball. <laughs> but oh, yeah, um I did think you know going back to you know the cult stuff that we talk about so often um i did think that piece about you know the human sacrifice at the cern facility that one when i that saw that and then the excuse that it was just a prank who, who does it? that who does that who filmed it i don't know couldn't couldn't find sources on that it shouldn't have been that easy to film that's kind of the only reason i'm like mm -hmm. I question it a little bit because it's like, if that place is so locked down, who filmed that? Unless it yeah. was like a whistleblower because a whistleblower is going to be taken out. Right. I I don't know if this came from, I, I mean, this, this obviously isn't a security camera because it's moving. Yeah. It's right. Like, where is that person? I, I don't know. Um, People aren't asking. This is that. a, this would be a pretty elaborate prank. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I thought that part scary. was really, really interesting. That's scary. Yeah. But who knows? Uh, I mean, I'm sure that we will see more Mandela effects popping up. Yeah. One of the other interesting theories that I saw was the 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 big, the, the large Hadron Collider uh, in Europe. It doesn't operate all the time. Like they shut it down for maintenance, repairs, upgrades. Um, and it's actually inoperative more than it is actually operative. Plus, it's like Congress. <laughs> okay. Um, but one of the points that they were making was the times when the Large Hadron Collider is active is the times that you start seeing more of these Mandela effect instances popping up which that part's kind of crazy too. Yeah, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a great one. Great one. Carrie, you 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 call it, Taylor. She's on fire. On fire. Um, this seems like some Bohemian Grove stuff with the human sacrifice. So I've done a lot of research into some of these, you know, secret organizations, including the Bohemian Grove stuff, uh, you know, Freemasons, uh, even the Shriners. Um, and at some point, we'll have to do an in-depth episode on that. I'm a little bit nervous to do an episode on that, though. I'm not going to uh, <laughs> Taylor's, Taylor's already out. Um, that was my yeah, spectator. A spectator. That, all of that is really, really creepy. Yeah. Um, some of it, I think, is, is a little silly and goofy. You know, like the... Uh, the skull and bones fraternity at Yale, uh, scroll and key, like some of those fraternity the things. One at, um, is it the, the one blood at types, or is it the one at Alabama? Is it? At, it's, I think it's. What's the secret group? It's at one of the colleges. We'll have to look into this, but it's pretty scary. Yeah. Um. The 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 biggest one is is at Yale. Yeah, but that one's not the one I'm talking about. There's one that's like extremely racist and does terrible, like terrible things. That's been yeah. around ever. Um, I'm more so talking about like, like an elite group of people that are controlling uh, the world. Yeah, I think that 
more like on an on an Illuminati type level. I feel like this is along the lines. Candace Candace said that real scientists aren't going to believe in human sacrifice. I mean, you have a point, Candace. Uh, but at the same time, you know, they did put a giant statue of Lord Shiva at this world renowned scientific facility. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. Anyway. Oh. But yeah, at some point we'll have to talk about that. Um, you know, just yeah. some of these secret organizations. Um, but like I said, I'm I'm a little nervous about that one personally. Uh just just because you, you never really know what you're messing with there. Yeah. Um, so I gotta I gotta even this episode, honestly, this episode I was a little nervous about just talking about CERN and the Large Hadron Collider, even though it's been something that has been of intense interest to me for several years, ever since they discovered the 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 God particle. And I think that was back in like 2012 or something is when I first started like really looking into this stuff. Um, and it's crazy that I've been looking into it for that long and I still don't know that much about it. Um, that just shows how unscientific and unintelligent I, I truly am. I'm better at writing jokes, you know? Uh, that's what I really need to stick to. Yeah, you're so funny. Thank God I didn't want to be a physicist, you know? The machine, um, that's what it's called. At the Bama. machine? Yeah, it's a secret society. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah. I've not heard of that one. Now I'm going to, now I'm definitely going to have to look into it. Yeah. It was like, it's been around for like a hundred years and it's whites only. I think it's white males only. I'm not wow. really sure. Still? Um, I think so. Huh? I mean, a lot of those, a lot of those fraternities are, they operate very much like a cult. It, yeah. It, I mean, even, even the, even the quote unquote harmless fraternities. Oh no, they're all pretty terrible. They exclude you from friends that are outside of the fraternity. They yeah. want you absolutely loyal and dedicated to your fraternity or sorority. Actually, We're about to get sororities roasted. can be the same way. We're about to get um, nah, we won't get roasted for that. Nah. Can't wait. No, I'm excited. Slide in my DMs. That's nah, fine. Have a good time. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I I I truly believe like uh the Greek system. Uh, oh, it's in, terrible. In colleges and universities, it, it operates a lot like a cult, actually. Well, it was built upon terrible principles. Yeah. And I think over time, they've like tried to make it be like, oh, no, it's... No, it's just a social club. Sure, It's great for your future and your resume, and you'll go do great things. I know so many people in fraternities and sororities that are just like real estate agents. Not that that's a terrible profession, but like, please... No, not at all. You know how much, you know how much money they spent to become real estate? <laughs> True. But at the same time, I, I know some guys that joined some really high powered fraternities and and went on to to get some very high powered positions. And it was right. all through their fraternal networks. Um, right. Both. Uh, I mean, uh, some white guys and some uh, African-American guys. I don't believe that. Yeah, I'm serious. In fact, uh, ooh, yikes, Deborah. <laughs> I don't even know if I could say that. I'm going to I'm going to put the comment on the screen i don't even know if i can really read I that. Don't put my face by it what's happening <laughs> yeah you're, you're right about that uh deborah uh that's that's something i've i've looked into and, and read about a little bit not not as much as some of this other stuff that we've been talking about uh but i have looked into that a little bit as well um candace says the statue is symbolic because of what they're doing they're smashing down to the smallest known particles in the universe and it was a gift from from india as well and and they're Sense. large participants in the in the CERN experiments. Uh so yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with you, uh Candace that uh human sacrifice is, is not a scientific endeavor, but I, I mean whatever they were doing out there, even if it was a prank, it's very strange, very weird. I don't like And they it. should be studied. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do some experiments on them. Um yeah. Y'all, thank y'all so much for hanging out uh, and talking with us. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for the super chats. Please like, follow, and subscribe. Uh, check us out on social media. You can look up the uh, the podcast at Friends with Davy. You can follow me on social media at Davy ja Jacks. Um, all the links are in the the video descriptions. I've also I've also got a bunch of stand up comedy shows coming up. Uh, Bryce is going to be back next week as well. We're going to be talking about some uh, some of the new cult documentaries that just came out uh that i was not as close to 
uh, but Bryce was was very very close to Taylor. Thank you for joining us. Did you wanna do you wanna mention anything? Love y'all. Okay, she just loves y'all, and I love y'all too. So, so we will. What's that? <laughs> I'm always so awkward. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because you don't really have anything to plug. You know, you never plug your social media. You don't have shows that are coming up. Yeah. So this only feels. Yet. You you never know. You never know. But thank y'all so much for hanging out. We'll see you next week. Love you. Bye.